Hello, this video will demonstrate how to install Tektronix QCloud on an Amazon Web Services virtual server. In this demonstration, I will be using the Google Chrome browser. I have noticed some differences in the AWS website for other browsers, so if you do not use Chrome, you may have a different experience than shown here. First, I will open my browser and go to aws.amazon.com. Select the AWS Management Console and you may be prompted to log in. You will need an Amazon.com account to use Amazon Web Services. This is not a special account used exclusively for AWS, but is simply a normal Amazon account that you would use for purchasing any product from their website. Your Amazon account must be linked to a credit card and you will be billed for all charges incurred by using AWS. The Management Console is the main interface for all Amazon Web Services, including the two we will be using, Elastic Compute Cloud, or EC2, and Simple Storage Service, or S3. AWS servers are physically located in multiple countries around the world. Select a region close to you. I am using the U.S. West Zone located in Oregon. Let's begin by selecting the EC2 console to create a new computing instance. Select Launch Instance and you will be shown a list of Amazon machine images. These are pre-installed operating systems and perhaps additional applications. I will select the Windows Server 2008 R2 base. Next, we will choose an instance type. This determines the size of the virtual server with respect to the number of virtual CPU cores, memory, and local storage. The M3.x large type is our recommendation for a single QCloud channel because it has four CPU cores. The next step is to configure a security group, which is a firewall that controls network access to your virtual server. By default, it is open to the world, so anyone could potentially access the instance. Instead, we will change the rule for the Remote Desktop Protocol, RDP, to only allow access from the IP address of the computer from which I am currently working. I will also add a second rule for the HTTP protocol so that I can access the QCloud web interface from my local IP address, but from nowhere else. The last step when launching the EC2 instance is to select or create a key pair. These are security credentials that you will use to retrieve the administrator password for your EC2 instance so that you can log into it. When you create a new key pair, you are prompted to save this to a local file. Chrome will save this to my downloads folder, and if I open the file from there to look at it, I can see that it is a very long string of random characters. Keep this file in a safe place because you will use it each time you launch a new EC2 instance. Finally, we will launch the instance. When I return to the EC2 dashboard, I can see the current status of the instance. After a few minutes, it will be ready for use. I can see the public DNS hostname and IP address for my virtual server. Press on the Connect button and you will be shown the IP address of your virtual server. Press the Get Password button and you will be prompted for your key pair information. Select the file that you previously saved and you will be able to decrypt the password. Save this password as you will need it to log in to the instance. To access our virtual server, we create a new remote desktop connection. Use the public IP address of the instance and log in as administrator using the password we decrypted moments ago. In a few moments, you will see the Windows Server 2008 desktop of our instance. Next, we need to get the QCloud installer binary downloaded to this new Windows instance. There are several ways to do this. We could get it from the Tektronix website or from an FTP server. In this demonstration, I have a local copy of the installer file that I will upload to S3 storage and then retrieve it on my EC2 instance. 
Go back to the main AWS dashboard and select S3. Next, we will create a bucket, which is similar to a folder. Make sure you create the bucket in your desired region. Select the bucket and press the Upload button. Choose the files you want to upload. In this case, I have a copy of the QCloud installer binary on my local computer's desktop, so I will select that. After the file has completed uploading, we can make it public. The file is now accessible via a web link that includes our AWS region, bucket name, and file name. Now, back inside our remote desktop session, open Internet Explorer. Paste the link to our file into the address bar of the browser. Because this Windows Server 2008 instance has been freshly created, enhanced security is enabled you will have to add the AWS website to the list of trusted addresses for the zone. Save the file to the instance's local disk. After the download has completed, close the browser and go to the Downloads folder. Double-click the installer to start QCloud installation. On the Installation Mode page, you will see a text field for the Customer Ref ID. This is a string provided by Tektronix for each QCloud license. Enter your Ref ID and press Next. You will need to set the installation directory for QCloud. The C drive of this EC2 instance will be saved if the instance is stopped, so select a folder there. The temporary storage location for QCloud can be volatile. The m3.xlarge instance type is created with two 40GB SSD drives that appear in Windows as Y and Z letters. Choose one of these. The rest of QCloud's installation is very similar to Serify installation. This part of the video has been accelerated for speed. After installation, we can launch the QCloud Web UI locally to verify that it is operational. But instead of running the Web UI over our remote desktop connection, we can simply access QCloud remotely from our local browser. We can disconnect the remote session because we no longer to work in Windows on our virtual server. Back on our local computer, I will open another tab and go to the IP address of my QCloud server. After I log in, the first thing to do is set the QCloud license information. Go to the Admin tab and scroll down to Cloud License Settings. The user ID and password are provided by Tektronix and must be entered here. Note that this user ID is different from the customer ref ID that was entered at installation time. When you press the Update button, the credentials are validated with the Cloud License Server. Our last step is to enable access to our S3 bucket from the QCloud application. You will need to create an access key from the Security Credentials page of the AWS console. An access key consists of a pair of strings. When you create the key, you can view these strings from the AWS console web page and you can save them to a CSV file on your local computer.
In QCloud, create a new media location from the admin tab. The URL format is s3 colon slash slash followed by your bucket name. You will also need to select the region where the bucket is stored. Copy the access key ID and secret access key strings to the media location configuration. When you create the media location, these credentials are verified. Lastly, we can create a media set at this S3 media location. You can see that the files saved in this bucket are now visible to QCloud. In this case, I have only copied the installer to my S3 bucket, so I don't see any video files yet. QCloud is now fully installed. I will now stop my EC2 instance from running so that I stop incurring AWS charges. Later, when I restart this instance, my QCloud installation and configuration will be just as I had left them before, because the C drive of my EC2 instance is saved to Elastic Block Storage, or EBS, and does not get deleted. From the EC2 console, I select my running instance and stop it. This concludes our demonstration of QCloud installation. Thank you for your time. For additional information, please visit the Tektronix website at www.tech.com.